Please, you must hurry. Every hour that passes brings us closer to having no water to drink. We cannot survive for long without your help. After witnessing the horrors that lie inside the labyrinth just below Tristram's Cathedral and returning to town for the first time for healing and respite, we pause briefly and notice the water in the center of town has turned a disturbing brown and is unmistakably tainted. Curious, we see Pepin, the healer for answers, who pleads, I'm glad I caught up to you in time. Our wells have become brackish and stagnant, and some of the townspeople have become ill drinking from them. Our reserves of fresh water are quickly running dry. I believe that there is a passage that leads to the springs that serve our town. Please find what has caused this calamity, or we all will surely perish. Water being a vital resource to human survival. Is this fouling of the water an act of war to weaken the town? Or has something tainted the water itself? We seek out the scholar, Deckard Cain, by the stagnant pool who shares. Mm. I don't know what I can really tell you about this that will be of any help. The water that fills our wells comes from an underground spring. I have heard of a tunnel that leads to a great lake. Perhaps they are one and the same. Unfortunately, I do not know what would cause our water supply to be tainted. Well, at least we know what we're looking for. A tunnel and a great lake. Perhaps the man most acquainted with liquid in town, Farnham the Drunk, has some words of wisdom on the matter. <laughs> you drink water? Touché. We trudge back through to the center of town, feeling a mite parched in the heat of Griswold the blacksmith's forge, as he relays, Pepin has told ye the truth. We will need fresh water badly, and soon. Uh, I've tried to clear one of the smaller wells, but it reeks of stagnant filth. It must be getting clogged at the source. Clogged at the source. I don't like to imagine what the clogger is, but a demon's hide would be enough to taint any form of purity. We head next to the tavern owner and supplier of food and drink, Ogden, for a status report, and he says, I have always tried to keep a large supply of foodstuffs and drink in our storage cellar, but with the entire town having no source of fresh water, even our stores will soon run dry. Please do what you can or I don't know what we will do. I fear if we don't purify the water source soon, the town will be weakened beyond repair. That and Farnham will probably drink through Ogden's mead in a matter of minutes if he catches wind of this. It's then we turn to the barmaid Gillian, standing out front of her grandmother's house, and she entreats. My grandmother is very weak, and Garda says that we cannot drink the water from the wells. Please, can you do something to help us? It seems it's already begun. Wasting no time, we raced past Wirt for any kernel of information which he shares. For once, I'm with you. My business runs dry, so to speak, if I have no market to sell to. You better find out what is going on, and soon. Agreed. A last stop before searching out the passage lie with the witch, Adria, in a small shack at the edge of town. As if anticipating our arrival, she stands, hands on hips, and remarks before we ask, People of Tristram will die if you cannot restore fresh water to their wells. Know this, demons are at the heart of this matter, but they remain ignorant of what they have spawned. So it is demons, as we feared. But Adria has somehow divined that they are ignorant of their doing. This may work to our advantage, as they would no doubt be lax in their defenses if they are indeed unaware of the devastation the simple act of withholding water to humans has wrought. With no time to lose, we head back into the second level of the cathedral, mind racing with the thought of what exactly could have tainted the town well. On the second level of the cathedral, we fight through a myriad of enemies actively trying to bar our path, including ghouls, fiends, hidden, and scavengers. Close to the pile of bodies we leave in our wake, in the northeastern side of the room lie a waypoint, and next to it a wall that has been eroded and what appears to be a tunnel inside. 
Upon entering the tunnel, we see infrastructure of wood beams holding up the small cavern as if it were man-made. We move then northeast and are greeted in a large opening, revealing the blood orange devilkin and their carver brethren waiting in the shadows to strike. A silent confirmation we are pressing in the right direction. Heading northeast into the narrow shaft, a more fallen, and curiously aided by the weakest of the Khazra, the Flesh Clan Goatmen. But what are they doing here? As we ponder the question and move up the main tunnel, we make out through the barely lit rocky facade the shapes of about a score of fallen fiends. Although their hooked swords and pointed spears could easily drop us where we stand, their cowardly disposition sees them flee every time we ourselves strike down one of their carver kin. After the fallen are no more a score, but instead dripping ichor underfoot, we step through the gore and head into a large central cavern and see a lake of putrid yellow that flows in the middle of the room, glowing in an unnatural hue, attracting the ambling denizens therein. No doubt, once the river that fed into the well. As we cut a swath through the remaining fallen and goat men, we notice a unique Khazra archer slinging arrows from the lip of the cavern Creek. Stalking him down as he retreats, we see his body oozes with open wounds and bright blood drips from his flesh. Known as Ramak the Poisoner, his accursed hide must be, at least partially, responsible for the tainting of the waters below. Giving Ramak no quarter, we clench our mace tight, dodging arrows as we beat his horned head in and blue fluid sprays from his fallen frame. Curiously, the blood matches the river's true waters as the sickness begins to abate. Seemingly demonic impermeant rather than a physical taint. With Mark fallen, we acquire the axe off his corpse and make our way topside to relay the findings to Pepin the healer once more. In town, we take a brief stop by the well in the thoroughfare and see that indeed the taint has subsided. Witnessing the change, Pepin beckons to us and adulates. What's that you say? The mere presence of the demons has caused the water to become tainted? Oh, truly a great evil lurks beneath our town, but your perseverance and courage gives us hope. Please, take this ring. Perhaps it will aid you in the destruction of such vile creatures. With that, the town again has access to fresh water, and we receive a unique ring of truth from Pepin, and a curious to its properties, taking it to Kane, who identifies it for us, for a fee, as it boasts plus 10 hit points, minus 1 damage from enemies, and plus 10% resist all. A great ring to be sure, as we will take any aid in our quest to uncover the lurking evil below the cathedral. However, we fear that the stagnant stew in a well is the least of the town of Tristram's worries in the coming days.